So this all started about nine years ago. I got a phone call from a New York Yankee who was looking for something unique. And of course, there was this property that sat on the market for about seven years, had multiple agents, and nobody ever purchased it. Well, I contacted the owner and the original owner, and I said, you know, I'd really like to show this property any interest. He said, you know, I'll let you show the property. In fact, I'll give you the full commission if you sell it. And my client didn't like it. So I went into his office the following day to thank him for giving me time in order to show this amazing property. And I told him, you know, look, it's not for this buyer, but I'd love to list this property. He said, you know, everybody wants my listing and then I never hear from them again. They never call, they never touch base. And I made a mental note on that. So every month for about 14 months, I went in to see the original owner of this property. He had an office here in town. So I'd go and I'd expect him to say, I don't have time for you every single time. And each time I'd go in, his assistants were super sweet and they would allow me to wait in case there was a chance that he had time to speak. Every single time for 14 months, 13 of the 14 months, I'd walk in, I'd spend a few minutes with them, and then a few minutes later the phone would ring and they'd say, Rodney will see you now. And I'd go in and he'd hit me with these pearls of wisdom. For example, he started selling insurance in Idaho. That was the first thing he was doing, going to small medical practices, doctors, family doctors. He's selling them insurance. One of this practices was very busy. The guy said, look, I don't have time for you. Go through what I have here. You let me know what I'm missing. So he takes a look through and he comes back a few minutes later. He says, you know, whoever created this plan for you did a great job. But if you have any more employees, any new kids, anything like that, you know, please let me know. I'd love an opportunity to earn your business. So the guy goes, take a look again. He said, sir, I already looked. You have a sufficient you know, plan currently. Anything changes, let me know. He said, take a look again. And he said, I already did. I looked at it thoroughly and you've got a good plan. Please contact me if you have any changes. The gentleman says to him, I've never had an insurance salesman not try to upsell me on something. So they could get a loaf of bread that month or something, but there's always an upsell. But because this man had integrity, he took all of the business. Every small practice wanted to deal with him. They didn't want to deal with somebody who's going to come in there and upsell them. They wanted to deal with somebody who had integrity. So he'd tell me these stories and he'd say, Mark, just keep doing what you're doing. Work hard, hustle, because I see it, we see it. And the more you do, the more one day things will come back in your direction. But don't expect it today. Don't expect it tomorrow. It could come, but more than likely it's gonna be down the road. I have a quote I wrote a couple years ago that's time plus effort equals result. You've gotta put the time in and an overwhelming amount of effort. And the crazy part is the first part, the time, it could be short or it could be forever. And you have to maintain the effort to get to the result. So I learned that from this man and I didn't get the listing. I walked in on, I think it was the 14th visit and as I got into the office I see the doors were both open. He had two, two doors. He had one on one side where his assistants were and then he had his office on the right. And as I walked in, I saw both doors were open and I was like, I've never seen that before. And I just peeked into his side, which is usually closed, and I see him there packing boxes. He says, his shoulders kind of fell. He goes, Mark, we sold the house. And he sold it directly to somebody, my current client. And he says, oh, but don't worry about it. He wants to flip it. And my mind was blown because this property was on the market for seven years. It had been at all crazy numbers. It was almost auctioned at one point. And then this gentleman buys it and wants to flip it. And so I, I was skeptical, obviously. And he said, when they interview agents for when this process takes place, I told them there's one agent they need to interview. There's only one agent that I, I told them that has to be at that table, at least to be heard, to have an opportunity. And that's you. He said, you know, I feel bad. You, you, you never asked for the listing. You just kept coming in, showing me. The thing that he never saw, which was an agent who wanted it. I showed that to him and then, I guess it was Labor Day of 2015. 
I get a call from the new owners that they're gonna be flipping the house. Would I be interested in interviewing? So of course I was so excited, I'd put 14 months in trying to get the listing with the previous owner. So I showed up on Labor Day, and I brought a big stack of paperwork and my drone. I said, do you guys wanna look at all this? And do you wanna fly the drone? They had a group of people here, and they're, it's a group of uh, real estate investors, they're here, and about 15 of them, and they're like, we wanna fly the drone. I took the drone out here on the front property. We spent about 20 minutes just showing off the tech, talking, and my client, current client says, do you think that positivity and being passionate about a property sells? And I said, without even thinking, I said, absolutely. I said, that's how I run my business. And he said, I agree with you. Fast forward, I got the listing, and this was on the market for $15 million in 2015, which was completely a crazy number. Um, and I think it was more of a brand play at the time. But now, okay, you fast forward, I didn't sell the listing. Okay, there's lots of stories that went along in that full year I had the listing of $15 million. But at the end of it, I'll just cut to the chase. I had gotten beat up so badly by the, you know, the property owners and the fact that the market wasn't a good market in 2015 for a high-end property like this. And I left that year feeling really down on myself. And I had to dig myself out of a hole to the point that they gave this listing to somebody else and then somebody else and somebody else and somebody else. And I never wanted to look at it again. I don't ever want to see this place again. All of a sudden, about a year ago, I guess, just I look at expired listings every day. You never know what's going to be an opportunity and you have to call on all of them. And so I see that this property expired again. And my mind was blown because I hadn't looked in this direction in four years plus. And so I pull up the listing and I see what I had on for $15 million was down at like six million bucks, five, six million bucks. And I'm thinking to myself, how the heck did I go through a year of my life at 15 million on this and I was kind of feeling like I, I, I did something wrong, I couldn't sell it. You fast forward seven years, the market was great during COVID and it's in the six million range and it didn't sell still. So I reached out to my client and I said, look, how about you give the guy a chance that for, had it at $15 million, how about you give me a shot at this number and I'll show you how to sell a property. So he got back to me, he said, look, I absolutely be interested. He said, you know, I, didn't, I wasn't even sure you were still selling real estate. He goes, I see your show, I see you writing music and the comedy, he goes, I, I tuned in. He goes, I thought it's great stuff you're doing. I thought that's how you're making a living. I said, no, I just do that to try to separate the world from the negativity that's going on. I sell real estate every single day. My heart and my soul are in selling real estate. I'm here to affect a positive change one client at a time. And so he says, let's sit down, let's have a conversation. So we did and I'm back here on the job. Now where it gets interesting is, today's the inspection. And hoping all goes well and this is a property that is gonna be lined up to close in the coming weeks. I tried to see if I could get the listing by just showing the initiative of showing up 14 months in a row to the previous owner. I took an overpriced listing because I believed I could sell it even though I knew it was really, really gonna be a crazy task. He had just purchased it for 10.8 million, then wanted to sell it for 15. So everybody sees that. It's not like you could hide that information. So I knew this would be an impossible task, and I don't think impossible is a real word, but in this situation, it pretty much was. And besides all of that, besides all of the negative that came along with the experience, I put my shoes on I showed up every single day to put the best image out possible for this property. So when someone comes here, I know the property inside and out. I've got stories that no other listing agent could share because I didn't work with the previous owner, but I knew him. I got to know him. I made an effort to get into this place and be the agent that sells it. And now nine years later, I will be that agent. Let me show you around a little. Do I still got it? Doubt it. Oh. 
One of the things I was always most pumped about was the stage, to have an actual stage that you could put on shows. Theater productions are set up and put on a concert here. Like this to me was one of the most amazing places that you could ever imagine owning. So to have the listing and be able to show that off was something I was really pumped about. And if this is the end for me here, I'm gonna miss the fact that there was a stage that I never had a chance to play on. I always talked about setting up my equipment here and doing a show. Never did it. Anyway, I think my favorite part about this property is this lower level here. You got a duck pin bowling alley. You've got a movie theater that I'll show you in a few minutes. Other games, foosball, hockey, and the golf simulator, which is probably my favorite game here. I haven't played golf in four years, but if I could play on a golf simulator at a real golf course like Augusta National, I'm down with that. So I'm gonna miss this space. Movie, anyone? This is the ultimate space to watch a film. Like 25 seats here for kids. And of course, oh, I get the center spot. What's on, let's see. You hear the wildlife out here? This place is unbelievable. This entire deck wraps around the back of the house. <laughs> I love that. So this place is magical. I mean, you're basically totally private. You do have a house back there, but in the summertime, you don't see anybody. You know, having this as your home is something I could never imagine, but being able to represent it is something that I will never forget. You know, I, I still can't get over how I'm standing here in the first place because most people would have given up. Most people would have never looked back. And instead of me doing what I've done in the past, which is turn it off and never look back, Sometimes you feel like you've given it enough and you want to call it quits, but me, I'll never call anything quits.